It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Life is long enough, and a sufficiently generous amount has been given to us for the highest achievements, if it were all well invested. Time is a topic that has fascinated thinkers of various eras and regions, and Seneca was no exception. Today, I would like to look at on the shortness of life. By Lucius Annaeus Seneca. In order to examine this work, we will take a look at the following two ideas: first, on how to treat and view time, and then second, meditating on mortality. After exploring those two topics, we will see how they mesh together to form Seneca's central message. People are frugal in guarding their personal property. But as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of one thing in which it is right to be stingy. Seneca laments that people are rather cautious about their money and possessions, but not protective at all when it comes to their time, even though time is perhaps the most finite of resources. Time is like money and possessions in the sense that if we don't know how to use them, we will never have enough of them. No matter how much we already have, just like how we are told to budget our money, Seneca is telling us that we must budget our time. People are delighted to accept pensions and gratuities, for which they hire out their labor or their support of their services. But nobody works out the value of time. Men use it lavishly as if it cost nothing. Seneca argues that it's not that we do not have enough time given to us, but many of us do not protect and value our time like a lot of us value our money and material goods. If we all become more aware of how much time we reserve for ourselves, and how much time we let others take from us, we will probably start to feel that we have a lot more time in our daily lives. If we do not make the conscious effort to budget our time, life will fill up with unfulfilling pastimes and slip away a lot faster. Seneca states, "Assuredly, your lives, even if they last more than a thousand years, will shrink into the tiniest span. Those vices will swallow up any space of time. So, if we do not value our time like our wealth." The end of our lives will creep up very fast. Meditating on mortality is something Seneca talks about extensively in his writings, and this letter is no exception. Seneca says there are a lot of people in the world who preoccupy their daily lives with unhealthy habits and vices, letting time go to waste. He refers to this population as the preoccupied. Seneca states that when people do this. They end up fearing the future, particularly death, but also ironically, they end up longing for the future as well. They fear death because they have things they want to do in old age, and death would get in the way. You act like mortals in all that you fear, and like immortals in all that you desire. You will hear many people saying, "When I am fifty." I shall retire into leisure. When I am sixty, I shall give up public duties. And what guarantee do you have of a longer life? Who will allow your course to proceed as you arrange it? We all know people who have ambitious retirement plans for when they are in their fifties and beyond. Seneca believes that this is not a good way to live, since there is no guarantee that we will be alive then. He also points out that the preoccupied population longs for the future as well, since they think that is when they will finally live life the way they want to. We have all seen friends and colleagues who want the next few months to pass as fast as possible, just so they can get to their two-week vacation faster. If we live with this kind of mentality, we will never have enough time in our lives, and will be dead before we know it. 
Seneca even goes as far as to state that if someone has a strong desire to live for a long time, they are not living a full life. In a word, would you like to know how they do not live long? See how keen they are to live long. So now to recap, Seneca says that we must value time more than money or possessions, and that we must realize death is unavoidable. From these two ideas, Seneca is calling for us to not delay things until old age, and live our life to the fullest when we are young. We have to start protecting and valuing our time now, not later. We have to act on our goals and ambitions now rather than later. Seneca states, but putting things off is the biggest waste of life. It snatches away each day as it comes, and denies us the present by promising the future. The greatest obstacle to living is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. You are arranging what lies in fortune's control, and abandoning what lies in yours. What are you looking at? To what goal are you straining? The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. In addition to observing our relationship to the present and future, Seneca also talks about how to work with our past. The problem, Seneca says, with the preoccupied people is that they are so busy moment to moment, they do not allow themselves any time to deeply reflect on the past. The present moment is always on the move, flowing on in a rush. It seizes before it has come, so it can be very difficult for us to seize every moment. The future is even more uncertain than the present. The past is the only one out of the three that is certain and cannot be changed by anyone. So if we want to live our lives to the fullest, we must take the time to learn from our past mistakes so we don't succumb to the same vices and temptations that swallowed up all of our time. Seneca also mentions the idea of existing versus living. So you must not think a man has lived long because he has white hair and wrinkles. He has not lived long, just existed long. This is how Seneca viewed the preoccupied. They were not living, just existing. By not protecting our time and wishing for a longer life, we are only existing, not living. By being so busy day after day and not making time to reflect on the past, we are only existing, not living. Going along this idea of plain existence, Seneca claims that people can be preoccupied during leisure and not just work. Some men are preoccupied even in their leisure, in their country house, on their couch, in the midst of solitude, even when quite alone. They are their own worst company. You could not call theirs a life of leisure, but an idle preoccupation. So in addition to protecting our time and reflecting on both past and death, how can we avoid this notion of idle preoccupation and live for years rather than just exist for years? Seneca urges everyone to make time for philosophy. Of all people, only those are at leisure who make time for philosophy. Only those are really alive, according to Seneca. Those who spend time studying philosophy, not only do they manage their own life well, they are adding years that have passed before to their own life. They do this by learning from the words of the greatest thinkers of the past. The greatest minds have left us with profound thoughts for us to use to guide our own lives, and this is exactly what Seneca is suggesting as the best way to make the most of our life. By spending time to appreciate the guidance of brilliant figures of the past, we can better understand what is most important for us, and how we can spend our time the best. 
connecting with philosophers through their written works is the path to becoming truly alive, according to Seneca. Regarding works of great philosophers, Seneca says, none of these will force you to die, but all will teach you how to die. None of them will exhaust your years, but each will contribute his years to yours. With none of these will conversation be dangerous, or his friendship fatal, or attendance on him expensive. From them you can take whatever you wish. It will not be their fault if you do not take your fill from them. Seneca then continues to point out that we do not have the power to choose our parents, but we can choose whose children we would like to be. He is saying that if we happen to be born to parents who practice harmful habits and mindset, we do not have to follow their ways. Instead, we can choose to be the children or pupils of Zeno, Socrates, or Aristotle. We can choose which ones to be adopted by, and then we will be able to inherit their ideas to put into practice. So the life of the philosopher extends widely. He is not confined by the same boundary as are others. He alone is free from the laws that limit the human race, and all ages serve him as though he were God. Some time has passed. He grasps it in his recollection. Time is present. He uses it. Time is to come. He anticipates it. And this combination of all times into one gives him a long life. Thank you for watching.